So, in terms of small donors, um, one, yes, matching funds do bring out more small donors. I don't think they do it spontaneously. I think they do it by stimulating, by changing the way candidates behave, by changing the way they recruit. Um, and the, for those who care about the technology, the, the, the technicals, the tests we use as a difference in dis differences test. Uh, more uh, mixed racially, the, the donors are stronger racial and demographic mix. They're more diverse. So the more of them, they're more diverse, and there's a much stronger or better. Donors are less, de I'm sorry, candidates are less dependent on big donors than, uh, than they used to be. The mix of donors is quite changed. So those are the findings so far before this study. Now we go to this. Um, will New York be the first? Okay, I've already talked about this part. Um, So in the release today, so we wanted to know would if if the program the governor outlined in the executive budget, if that became law, would that have an effect that's similar to what what occurred what been going on in New York City? Specifically, what would it do to the balance of small and large donors? And would candidates gain or lose money by participating? Because if they would lose, they wouldn't, they won't voluntarily opt in. And how much would it cost? Since the last time this came up six years ago, that was a big deal when people made up numbers to pretend that it would cost, it would hurt education in the, in the state. Um, and the methodology we used, uh, we began with the year-end reports that were filed January 15th, three, not quite four weeks ago. You aggregate contributions by donor. You can't just look at contributions because in order to look at the effect of contribution limits and the effect of matching funds, you have to know how much J. Smith, if, if J. Smith, John Smith, and Jack Smith each gave, is that three people or one people? You have to know that. You have to be able to aggregate it in order to understand the effect. Um, and we looked at two hypothetical models. In model one, uh, we said, let's take all the candidates from 2018 and assume that all the donors would give exactly what they gave in 2018, except limited by the new contribution limit. And their first $175 would be matched. And we parsed out and apportioned the LLC money in a way that's take too long for it to be worth doing now. Um, so that was one. Uh, model one. It's what we call the static model. Second, we made, we said, well, you know, the whole idea of this program is for, uh, to get candidates to go look for more donors. So what if they did and what if they were successful? And how much might we imagine they could, they could simulate? We said, well, just for the sake of the target number, let's assume they could, uh, we said, 1.5% of the adult population. That was not a number picked out of thin air. That's more or less the number that give to New York City elections. It's also more or less a middling number for a state. New York is way down toward the bottom in donor participation now. It's about one half of 1% of the adults give anything. Um, we're saying, what if it got up to middling range through this kind of a program? So that's, those are the two models. First thing we did was we said, what would it do to the candidates to the balance of funds? Um, come on. Uh, so this is what I, I'm going to show you assembly and governor will stick, skip Senate. It's pretty much like the assembly. Under the current system, 10% of the money that goes to assembly candidates um, here comes from donors who give 175 or less. 17% uh, uh, from donors who give 1,000 or more, 43% from non-party organizations such as PACs, and then the assembly is not so big on the LLCs, 4%. Now, if you went just with the static donor model, but put the new laws in effect and retrofit them to the 2018 election, that's what it would look like. 
remember this is what it looked like before. Take, just keep looking at that bar on the left. Goes from 10 to 32, that, that's the biggest bar. It was nearly the smallest bar. Now it's the biggest. And this is assuming what this includes, in each of the bars you include the public money that each donor would stimulate. So the small donors, instead of being an afterthought, 10%, would be almost a third of the total. Uh, Non-party organizations would be cut less than half. Large donors also cut about in half. And that's just the same donors. And if the, turn, if the donors, if the candidates changed their behavior and started going out and looking for more small donors, they started looking like this. 41% from the small donors, 10% uh, from the large donors. It's, it's, a, it's a complete reversal of the nature of the, of the balance. If you look at the governor, this is what the governor's fundraising looked like in 2018. Almost a half from um, $1,000 donors and up. Another more than three quarters from non-party organizations, plus another almost 20% from LLCs. Under the new system, same donors, instead of 4%, 28%. Instead of 46%, that's down to 37. LLCs is down to six, much less. And then if, and Cuomo honestly didn't really, if, if he tripled his small donors, it wouldn't do very much because he didn't have very many. But uh, if, if you did go to 1.5% participation, again, that becomes the biggest part of the chart. It, it's, com it's a complete reversal of the basic balance. And what about the candidates? It's none of this works unless the candidates voluntarily opt in. Under the Constitution, you cannot force a candidate to take public funds and the restrictions that come along with the public funds. They have to say yes voluntarily. If they're gonna lose a lot of money under this kind of a system, they're not gonna participate. It's, it's really, a, it's not brain surgery. So what we did is we, we assumed everybody would participate. Um, uh, we did them in the previous models. We, we assumed everybody would, but really would they? Um, and here's, here's what would happen. How many candidates would be ahead or behind under the system with the same donors, not even with new donors? And the answer is for the assembly, 94% would come out ahead. Uh, very, very few would not. One who's rather significant is the speaker, uh, but he doesn't come out that far behind. Um, Senate, 91%. The, the governor, it's five out of six, but you know who the sixth is. Uh, that is, the, the, the governor would be capped, would, Governor Cuomo would lose a lot, um, but the others would be way out ahead. So that's it, most candidates would gain. Um, how much would it cost? Uh, again, I remember being through the battles where the Senate Majority Leader said that our proposal was nutty because it would cost $200 million a year and would, would hurt the school districts and blah, blah, blah. No. Um, this is assuming all candidates participate, assuming the same donors. Uh, total cost of um, Over two election cycles, four years, that's the number, 124.2 million, divided by four for an average annual cost, 31 million. That's just the matching funds. Add in an administrative cost that was worked up by the New York City Campaign Finance Board for the state, another 21 million, total of 51 million. That's the combined annual cost administration plus matching fund, divided by 19.5 million New Yorkers, and you come to $2.62 per New Yorker per year, substantially less than a penny a day per New Yorker. If you get new donors, then it goes whoopee, it goes all the way up to $3. It's still less than a penny a day. It's on a, and this is on a 150 plus billion dollar budget. $50 million on 100. It's, it's one favor not done for a big donor, is basically. Um, so the, that's the cost. Uh, a lot of people are sensitive about the cost. They should be sensitive about the cost. Um, 
but we'll stand behind these numbers. And the last time we, pr we produced them, the division of the budget basically accepted the work. In other words, uh, well, I there, I already said it. There is one serious problem with the proposal that's out there uh, that I should expose, that I try to expose in everything I do. Um, none of the benefits can happen unless candidates qualify for the money. Uh, and every state, every city has some sort of threshold before you can take public funds. Otherwise, the treasury would be ripped off by all sorts of frivolous candidacies. Uh, most legislators have not the means to do a reasonable test of what a threshold should be. So they pick numbers out of the air. No, no fault. It's just that's what they do. Uh, we actually ha this method we use gives us the possibility to look at what the impact of the qualifying thresholds would be. And um, as currently drafted, uh, it's it, it just won't qualify. <laughs> it's it's really badly drafted on that, in that respect. Um, this is the number who would qualify, of, and I could explain if you want it, but uh, how we did it. But over after now, that is December of 2018, under 40 percent of the candidates would have qualified. And obviously, it's useless getting money in December. Uh, really, if you want public money to help your campaign, you better get it about Labor Day. And as you can see from this, barely a quarter would have qualified under the rules of minimum number of contributions of a certain level, a certain number. Of, and we didn't even do the hard test. We didn't even try to see whether donors came from the candidate's district, which is a harder test. Let me, I'm almost finished with this, and I did see your hand. Uh, but um, under this, these numbers show what would happen with slightly easier qualifying tests. In other words, you can make it easier to qualify without opening up the treasury. Uh, and then, so conclusion summary, uh, assume the qualification rules are amended, uh, then the full matching proposal would, as, as we look at it, one, it would sharply change the financial balance of politics. Two, it would benefit almost all the candidates. And three, it would cost less than a penny a day for a New Yorker. So from a lot of points of view, a lot of people would argue that's a bargain. Uh, anyway, that's, um, I, I see already with his hand up. So I'm very excited to have a question already. So, so good, let's, so I'm done, so now you.